There is trouble for Kano State Governor Abba Yusuf, who has been sacked by the state's governorship election petitions tribunal. His closest rival, the APC's Nasser Yusuf Gawuna, has been declared winner of the poll. Arise correspondent Ayo Adenaya reports. The venue to the entrance of the Kano State High Court is well manned by fierce looking security operatives as few journalists, lawyers, party chieftains, and supporters are screened before gaining access to the court premises. Journalists were barred from using video cameras in the courtroom even before the commencement of the proceedings. They were only allowed to take shots of the premises. It was a surprise for many who later discovered that the judgment was set to be delivered virtually. The three-man panel, led by Justice Oluyemi Osadebi, upheld one of the major reliefs of the petitioner that Governor Abba Yusuf was not qualified as a registered member of the new Nigerian People's Party as at the time of the primary elections. The court also deducted 165,663 votes from Governor Abba Yusuf, stating that the ballot papers were not stamped or signed and therefore declared invalid. After all said and done, the presiding judge ordered the withdrawal of certificate of return, which INEC presented to Governor Abba Yusuf and directed a certificate of return to be issued to Nasir Yusuf Gawuna. Counsel to the All Progressive Congress, Musa Lawa, sheds more light on the judgment. When we have filed this petition, we have clearly showed that uh, the declaration by the then uh, the uh, uh, returning officer, the declaration by the returning officer was wrongly made. We 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 filed this petition to show that, and clearly we have demonstrated it by bringing in invalid ballot papers, 165,000 of the ballot papers, and the court went through these ballot papers one after the other and confirmed that these ballot papers were not signed, stamped and dated. And the law says it shall be signed, stamped and dated. Uh, it's natural. Uh, there's nothing we can say much but just to thank the Almighty God. That's the only thing we can say because uh, the truth has been triumphed and uh, we can thank uh, the judges we thank our lawyers for the tremendous job they have done. Counsel to the new Nigerian People's Party, Bashir Mohammed says the party will appeal the judgment. Yeah, well, um, the judgment, the tribunal has delivered its own judgment. We are going to consult our uh, clients and I can, I can assure you that we are going to appeal against this judgment because it's a judgment which we felt does not manifest uh, the justice of the matter. And I can assure you this uh, decision would be set aside on a film. Actually, the judgment has just come out. Now, now, as you can see, we are just coming out from the court. And what uh, the court has just uh, said, we accepted it. Uh, we have even highlighted our people yesterday that there is a sign of uh, injustice that is taking place in this court. Uh, prior to what uh, has happened, we it, we, we, we inform our people that uh, injustice will be likely take place in this uh, court and we are appealing to our team supporters and the populace of Kano State that we are not taking it for granted we didn't accept this judgment we are appealing definitely appeal will judge it better than this court. It is over here at the Kano election petition tribunal where the three-man panel led by Justice Oluyemi Osadebi declared the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Nasser Yusuf, as the elected governor of Kano State. This ruling implies that the incumbent governor of the state, Abba Yusuf, has been sacked. The judgment has continued to spark reaction among both parties, while the All Progressive Congress and their supporters are already in the street celebrating and jubilating this judgment. The new Nigerian People's Party, their lawyers and their supporters said this particular judgment will be appealed at the Court of Appeal. The situation in Kano remains tense, even as security agencies appeal to political parties to caution their supporters to contain their reactions to the outcome of the judgment. Ayo Adenaye, Arise News, Kano. Well, Kano states in the news from yesterday into this morning, Rufai, hmm. take on the story.
Well, the new Nigeria People's Party and NPP has described the judgment of the Kano State Election Petition Tribunal, which nullified the state's governorship election of March 18, 2023, as a miscarriage of justice and a simple replay of the unholy script of 2019 by overturning the will of the people and awarding election victory to those who evidently lost the election. In a statement by the NNPP Acting National Chairman Abba Ali, they question the tribunal's decision to unfairly sub subtract 165,663 votes from Governor Abba Yusuf's tally in order to enable it to unfairly award the election result to the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, while in another breath affirming the vote tally of the APC as sacrosanct. Mr. Ali further insists that the NNPP will appeal the judgment while calling on the party supporters to maintain peace while seeking redress at the Supreme Court. And a 24-hour curfew has been declared in Kano State following the judgment. The state's commissioner of police says a combined team of security operatives have been dispatched across the city to enforce the curfew. In view of the constitutional mandate of the Nigeria Police Force, alongside the relevant internal security and law enforcement agencies to preserve the law and order in the state, the Kano State Police Command have mapped out strategies on that direction and call on the good people of the state to give the necessary confidence and support. Going forward, Kano State residents are called upon to note that combined security forces have already been dispatched to the nooks and crimes, including the entry and exits of the state, to ensure enforcement and strict compliance of the 24 hours card order as communicated by the Kano State Government via a letter with reference number K slash SEC slash H slash 435 slash T.1 slash 153, dated 20th September 2023 taking effect from 6 p.m. of Wednesday to 20th September to 6 p.m. of Thursday, 21st September 2023. All right, Rufai, take on the story. Yeah, a lot is happening in Kano. At first, we'd like to call for calm. Please, everybody in Kano, calm things down. There's also an appeal, and the NMPP has a right to go to appeal. But I want to dial this matter back to a couple of weeks ago where protests erupted in Kanu over alleged attempt to bribe election tribunal. This was reported in the leadership newspaper about a month ago. And the talk then was about attempt to bribe election tribunal as regards the outcome of the elections. And some youths protested and they were received by the governor. That protest was beamed live on TV. We saw it. Then this happened. The truth is, I think it was Lord Denning that said, if a judge is sitting on trial, he himself is on trial. The judiciary of Nigeria is constantly on trial. But we must have no room for breakdown of law and order. In fact, during the protest that one month ago, the county state government was really miffed at the police authorities that they said, no, people shouldn't protest them. But now I'm happy that a curfew has been called. What are the facts of the case? Pure and simple. Pre-election matters. The fact that the name of Abba Kabir Yusuf was not on there, on the NNPP register that was sent to Ireland. This was one of the claims of the APC. They talked about overvoting. They talked about that the electoral materials were not stamped and the likes. And because of this, the court detected 165,000 votes. The NNPP has kicked against it by saying, oh, because it's 165,000 votes from us, what happened to the APC? The grand tally of the votes, I think the, uh, what's it called? The, the APC had well over 850,000 votes, and then people had over a million votes. After the deduction, they announced the APC winner. The NN people have said, we're going to go ahead and make our grievances known in an appeal. So they should go ahead. Let us wait for the appeal. We can't afford to throw Kanu into chaos. Kanu is a cosmopolitan city, is a melting pot, goes a very, very long way in the peace and development and the unity of Nigeria. 
So we'd like to beg the political actors. And let's see what the judiciary will say in the appeal. That's all I'm going to do this morning. I'm going to appeal. The facts of the case are out there. You can say anything you want to say, but we need peace in Kano. All right, peace in Kano. Okay, number one, you know, because of emotions that have been invested in all in this uh, 2023 general uh, electoral process, there's always this tendency, you know, to impute motives about the integrity of the judiciary. And that's a very delicate thing to do because these are allegations, speculations that in most cases cannot be proven. And we've seen many politicians engaging in foul play, staging all kinds of melodrama, and trying to impugn the integrity of the judiciary. And the campaign, of course, is that, look, there are white judges are also human beings. Where you have no proof, do not allege. That's number one. Number two is that in this particular case, as in other cases, the governorship election petition goes from the tribunal, and when it is appealed, it goes to the Court of Appeal, then it goes to the Supreme Court. So in this case, in Kano, uh, the ruling has come from the Court of First Instance, which is the uh, tribunal. And the tribunal will end up, of course, as the process unfolds, as a lower court, because clearly the NMPP in Kano State and the governor and his supporters have made it clear that they are going to go to the Court of Appeal that they're going to go to the Supreme Court, as the case may be. Which is why it's important that um, Governor Yusuf has already put out a statement, you know, appealing to people to be calm. And that, in fact, today, you know, they will, the state will have a state executive council meeting. And that it's not as if any tragedy has befallen the NMPP in Lagos State. That's important because there were reports of unease in Kano a city that is politically divided down the middle between the uh, All Progressives Congress and the uh, uh, New Nigeria People's Party, or if you like, between uh, uh, the presidential candidate of the NMPP, Dr. Rabi Konkwanso, and uh, former governor of, uh, of uh, Kano State, who is now chairman of the APC, uh, Dr. Ganduje, who are fighting on the sidelines their own uh, war for the soul of Kano State. So our appeal in this regard is that nobody should see this process as a do or die process. It's not a life and death matter. And that is why you know, the leadership, the political leadership in Kano State, across party lines, even beyond NMPP and APC, should conduct themselves you know, in the fashion of gentlemen, in the fashion of sportsmen, knowing that you know, the process is not over yet. It's still going to the Court of Appeal it will still go to the uh, Supreme Court. Now, what are the issues? Membership. Three petitions, all the three grounds of petition that the APC brought were granted, you know, by the tribunal. The first was that uh, uh, Abba Yusuf was not uh, a member of the uh, NMPP at the time he was nominated as the governorship uh, candidate. Second, that there was overvoting. And third, the major issue was vote margin, the margin of votes, that the margin of victory uh, was uh, lower than the number of cancelled votes. Originally, the uh, APC was declared as having won with 1.019 million votes. And uh, the, the, NMPP. the NMPP won with 1.019 million votes, according to INEC, and that uh, the APC came second with 890,000 votes. So now that 165, 663 votes had been deducted, and the argument of the tribunal was that the ballot paper was not duly stamped, therefore rendering those ballot papers invalid. Okay, some commentators will say this is an indication, if indeed it is true, and that allegation can stand as the uh, tribunal's rule, will be an indictment of INEC. Why give ballot papers to people you know, that will be declared invalid subsequently. But as I said, this is not yet the end of it. So by the time they did the deductions, they now awarded, you know, uh, a victory of over 36,000 votes. Imagine, of 36,000 votes is now what yeah, that uh, tribunal ruling uh, is based on. But of course, 
everybody should just calm down. It will still go to the Court of Appeal. It will go all the way to the Supreme Court. And we have seen cases in some other states of the Federation where the Supreme Court at the end of the day ruled one way or the other. What people must respect is the rule of, law, of the law, of law. Not their own emotions, not their own sentiments. And Kano is a very strategic place. The, both the security agencies, it's good that they are taking a keen interest in uh, you know, the developments in that state. And also, there are community leaders, there are leaders of thought in Kano State who have a stake in ensuring that politicians you know, do not violate the integrity of that commercial nerve center and that the politics of Kano State is not reduced to you know, a battle of egos between uh, politicians seeking to impose their own influence. And that's on the political side. And that is why the politicians must simply respect the integrity of the courts and the rule of law and the belief that the courts will deliver justice at the end of the day. Well, respect for the rule of law, and just to mention again, and kudos to the CP, that's the Commissioner of Police of Kano State, Mohamed Gomo, for reacting very swiftly to this announcement. It's quite unfortunate, quite sad, that when we have rulings or perhaps this um, judgments that sack or reinstate a political actor, we have people who then descend to violence. We must respect the rule of law. Kano has been, you know, he's in, in the past, the hot um, spot, especially when it comes to election matters, if it doesn't go a particular, particular way or the other. And so perhaps our biggest advocacy for this morning would be for the, um, you know, surrogate members of parties to remain calm and not exacerbate the situation to make, you know, to affect lives and properties in Kano State. Yesterday, was, it was already said that following the ruling by the judge, by, by, the, um, by, the, by the courts, Sabangari Market, a number of people ran away, shut their shops in anticipation of what could potentially have descended into very, you know, into violence and loss of lives and property. A curfew has been declared from 6 p.m. last night into 6 p.m. this morning, and the Kano's um, State Police Command have said that they will deal, you know, decisively with anyone who is seen to be to violate the terms of the curfew. And so, just to ask the people in Kano State to remain calm, stay home if possible, and as we often say, don't die in the war of politicians. At the end of the day. We um, recall that um, the leader of the NNPP, at least in, in Kano State and nationally, Mr. Rabi Kwakonso, had gone to meet with the president, who is an APC member. So they have conversations, there are alliances there where possible. So just to make that statement very clear in terms of the fact that this is not the end of the road, it's the first ruling. The um, NNPP have a right to appeal, which they've said they're going, to ex they're going to use, they're going to appeal this as they've um, um, said it's an unfair ruling by the judge according to their estimation. Also, just to emphasize, because for me, in terms of one of the um, big grounds for the deduction of the votes, is the fact that there were issues around the ballot papers that were used, so not being stamped, not, uh, so not authenticated by INEC itself. And so big question, because the elections that took place in February and March of this year almost seems like an election for the judiciary, whereby many of these matters are concluded in the courts. Whereas if we had had a, an excellent or a good um, election process as coordinated or organized by INEC, we wouldn't or shouldn't be in this position. And so what justifies the billions of Naira, you know, released, allocated and released to INEC to conduct an election in 2023? An election, I mean, Nigeria has been having an election for, for years. So why is it that we cannot get it right? Where a simple mistake, in quotes, or an oversight, such as stamping of ballot papers, would become an issue in ele election matters. We need to investigate this. And again, the call is for INEC to be held responsible and have a case to answer. Beyond the court's ruling, INEC has to answer questions. They failed Nigerians largely in terms of the conduct of the last, ele of the last election. Hence, we have matters like this. And so when, we, when the courts rule in this manner, citing irregularities, I mean, we've had cases whereby, um, you know, the due process wasn't followed in the acceptance or, or, or authentication of a particular candidate. Um, primaries have been faulted. Didn't INEC oversee the process? Didn't INEC check if this was all right? So these are questions we must ask beyond just looking at the courts. 
INEC has a responsibility. And the reason why we must investigate this is so that we do not have a repetition of this or a reoccurrence, because it would be such a shame if an institution that's well-funded and receives the support of state is not able to conduct a simple election. So these are some of the conversations we should have. And, and you know, when you look at the conversation as well as to the timeline for petitions and um, when it happens after a swearing-in has been done, we have situations like this where, a, a, you know, the governor has been in office for over 100 days, we've celebrated 100 days in office, and then the court sacks him. It, it's, you begin to understand why we must revisit our electoral laws and the process to which we, you know, um, we substantiate a principle. Move on to our next story. The Ondo State House of Assembly is about to commence the process of impeaching the Deputy Governor, Loki Ayedatiwa. At an emergency session held amidst heavy presence of security men, the lawmaker has directed the Clerk of the House to write the Deputy Governor over allegations of gross misconduct leveled against him. A petition signed by nine out of the 26 members of the House was read during the plenary presided over by the Speaker, Olamide Oladiji. Sources within the Assembly told Arise News that 23 out of 26 lawmakers have now signed the impeachment notice against Ayedatiwa. Well, Rufai, on those states in the news as well this morning. Pure and simple, uh, on those states in the news again, politics at stake. And that's why we keep saying, don't die in the war of politicians. What is happening? Pure and simple. Governor Akira Dulu is back. While he was away, some of his loyalists you know, were pointing out to the fact that the acting governor was doing a lot. And was doing a lot, in court means, overreaching himself in the position. And that's what his loyalists kept on saying and muting out. Now that Governor Akira Dolu is back, there's been a lot of back and forth about who is the king of the Manor. While all of this is happening, quickly we're seeing allegations as regards gross abuse of office. One of them was about using money to buy bulletproof cars from subsidy money. I mean palliative money. And you wonder, the people keep suffering in all of this, but it's for him to be able to respond to the allegation. And let's see how the process will go. But the deep view to this is politics going on pure and simple. All of this happened all of a sudden when Governor Akira Dulu returned. There's been many factions. And let's also stretch it a bit. Either to before now, Governor Akira Dulu also had back and forth with his former deputy governor when that one tried to reach himself also. In fact, he ran in an election against Governor Kirido. I think he came third in that election. It's just back to politics. But I keep asking, in all of this, what is for the Undo people? And that's what we should be more concerned about. Because politicians will play their game. When they are loggerheads, a lot will happen. Prior to this time, there were many allegations and counter-allegations against Deputy Governor Aedatiwa. But I'm not saying if he's found guilty, the full you know, uh, weight of the law or the full action should not be taken by these members. But the deep view to all of this is a political outplay that is going on in Ondo states. Just like Edo states. It's always the case with our politicians. Pure and simple. Okay, we're back again to this uh, issue about the relationship between governors and their deputies. I've said before on this table that section 187 of the Constitution talks about a joint ticket. You can't become a governor if you don't have a deputy uh, governor. And on that section 191, if the uh, governor is not around, either by reason of death, resignation, incapacitation, or impeachment, the deputy governor acts as governor. And when he acts as governor, whatever he does during that period is valid. But what we find is that within the uh, construction of our constitution, uh, governors don't feel safe with their you know, uh, deputies. They think that the deputy may be ambitious, that the deputy may want to take over from them, and it may be 
you know, uh, building his own sphere of influence. We have seen it in Lagos State, just to go back all the way to 1999, between uh, 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 Governor Chinubu, as he then was, and his deputy at the time, uh, Mrs. Uh, Kofu Bokno Akirili, leading to, you know, the uh, removal of uh, um, uh, Deputy Governor Bokno Akirili from uh, office, or was it a resignation? It was the same thing also, you know, with uh, Mr. Pedro, you know, who became the second uh, deputy governor. You can go on and on. You know, the Edo State is also the most recent example uh, that we have seen. The Kano State that we started with, there was no love lost between Ganduje as deputy to Kwangwaso, mm -hmm. who was governor at the same time. And that's why I've argued on this table that perhaps we need to take a second look at the role of deputy governors and perhaps define it more properly. That's number one. So that deputy governors are not treated as spare tires, as they are otherwise described. Now, in Ayedatiwa's uh, case, in Ondo State, he acted as deputy, as an acting governor, when uh, the governor, Akiru Dolu said, went for recuperation in Jamne. And that was from uh, uh, June 9 to September, uh, uh, to almost the end of uh, September, when Governor Akiru Dolu returned. Now, while he was acting as a governor, Aida Tua had issues with other members of the cabinet who were core loyalists of uh, Governor Akiri Duru and who were accusing him of all kinds of things. They said he was making subterranean moves to take over and they raised questions about his loyalty. Those persons probably succeeded because when Governor Akiri Duru returned, one of the first things he did was to sack all the media aides of the deputy governor and said the Ministry of Information will be attending to the media needs of the uh, uh, deputy governor. And at that point, there were speculations that there were plans to impeach the deputy governor, which was denied. Mm. And now we have it on the table. So what matters here is Section 188 of the uh, Constitution, which talks about how you can remove a deputy or a governor. And they started by uh, putting up a notice, serving him a notice. Now, after uh, he's expected to re respond, uh, within uh, seven days, and whether he responds or not, by 14 days after he has been served that notice, they have to take a resolution to determine whether there should be an investigation. Two thirds, they will need to test majority of that uh, 26 member House of Assembly. Now, if they get that two thirds majority, then they set up a panel, which will be headed by the, uh, you know, the chief judge of the state, and comprising seven persons who will be persons of unquestionable integrity. I'm wondering where you will find a person of unquestionable integrity in many of our communities, and who will not be members of any political party or have any political bias. Then that panel would then sit. If that panel thinks that there is a case to be answered, then the person to be impeached will have to come and defend himself, either in writing or through his counsel, his legal representative. And then the that panel of seven makes a recommendation to the House of Assembly. Then the House of Assembly can take a decision one way or the other. It can take three months. But we have seen cases of deputy governors being uh, impeached within three days. And you wonder whether Section 188 is ever respected when impeachment is issued. However, what is to be noted is Section 188 sub 11, which offers a definition of gross misconduct in Ondo State, what they are saying is that Ayedatiwa as governor bought himself uh, an SUV bulletproof with money meant for palliatives. Okay? But really, they don't really need to offer any explanation. Section 188 sub 11 says, gross misconduct will amount to a breach of any section of this constitution or what in the opinion of the legislature amounts to gross misconduct. So what, what is uh, at issue here is just the opinion mm -hmm. of tutors. And if they say, no, this man must go, he's gone. But that's not how a democracy should work. Yes, before now, the other deputy governor that worked with uh, uh, Governor Akredulu, Agbola Ajayi, that was his name. There was an attempt to impeach him too, but the, uh, the assembly didn't succeed because they couldn't get that two thirds. But all the people that kept uh, Agbola Ajayi there, they were persecuted, we were taught. Many of them, in fact, were not uh, re-elected. So it's the same old drama again in Ondo State, well, will Ayedatiwa be lucky, like Agola Jai, to serve out his term, 
And uh, even if he too wants to be governor, <laughs> will he fail and go the way of Abu al who has been effectively sidelined, you know, in those state uh, politics. So these are the issues. But the bigger issue is the relationship between governors and their deputies and what we should do to make sure that deputy governors are not treated or as uh, spare tires. Well, spare tires, whether we have from Ondo State with um, Deputy Governor Ayedatiwa or we go to Edo State, Deputy Governor Mr. Philip Shaibu, at the end of the day, it's politics at the end of the day. And it's quite unfortunate because the role of the State House of Assembly, amongst other functions, is to check the executive. And so they are well within their rights to investigate allegations of gross misconduct. In this case, which they've cited for the Deputy Governor of Ondo State. However, what has happened many times, as we've already um, an analyzed, is the fact that gross misconduct or impeachment is used as a tool, as a political tool, when two parties, in this case the governor and the deputy governor, are at loggerheads, allegedly, which is quite unfortunate because if the State House of Assembly across the country and the um, National Assembly did their jobs in terms of really investigating cases of gross misconduct and ineffective you know, leadership or being able to check the executive will have a stronger democracy in Nigeria. It means that it can work. This process can work. Unfortunately, it only works when, um, when interests do not align. And so the sheriff is back in terms of Governor Akeudolu. Thank God for his life. He'd battled ill health for an extended period of time, and the deputy governor had to step in. And of course, well, on, as we've, we've seen in past cases, the script plays out again and again. The deputy governor becomes ambitious, and then the governor comes back and notices that, oh, you were going for my job. I have to take you out because you're not, you know, in, in this, you're, you're, not, you're not loyal. And then we begin to see drama take place, like someone being shot out of his house, media aides being fired, and the likes. At the end of the day, we don't know how the script will turn out because two-thirds of the House has been established, has to um, vote in this matter. But what I'm just pushing is that State House of Assembly, National Assembly can work in checking the executive, especially when it comes to checking excesses, misconduct, gross misconduct and the like. Let this not only come out when there are political sc um, um, set, um, scores to settle. Let it be in the interest of the people to ensure that the governor or the executive serves the people well and not as a political vendetta. We'll watch out how the Ondo State um, you know, matter will play out according to the House. This is what they've said, gross misconduct. Investigations will be conducted. Dr. Bati has taken us through the steps and the processes to whether he will be impeached or not. We'll obviously definitely bring you updates on that one. <laughs>